I'm rebranding. Welcome to the sequel, how to completely obliterate your eyes while drawing, otherwise known as the hyperpop slash eye strain art style. Please ignore the amount of days it's been since the last tutorial. Since then, I would like to think I've improved and I got over my fear of the color green. These all thin eyes. Anyways, if you haven't watched my first video, please watch it because you will have a lot more context in general and you won't be completely lost while watching this one. So this video is gonna be split up into three main parts. More ways of choosing a color palette, general rendering tips, one alternative way of putting it all together and my current way of putting it all together. Ways of choosing colors. Now, other than the pizza slice method, there are a couple of more ones I encourage you to try. The waxing quarter method, using half the color wheel. Essentially, just use half the color wheel and go bananas using anything inside the section. This is a very good one that I've been using a lot the past year. The reason why it works so well is because you are technically using complementary and it's also analogous at the same time. There are lots of different combos you can do with this and it's very easy to set up so you literally can't go wrong with this so just try it. Random bullshit go! The random bullshit go method, my personal favorite, basically you put down your base colors, clip an overlay of a random color, then on top of that clip a color burn slash linear burn random color layer and then erase the parts of the color burn layer to show where the light source hits now alpha lock both the overlay and color burn and finally the fun part mess around with filling both layers with different colors because depending on the combo of colors they both are you can get vastly different results so just experiment until you find a combo that you think looks good or you are satisfied with then render on top of what you decided on. This is the method I most commonly use because I really like the experimenting part of it. So I'd rather just figure out the colors beforehand instead of redoing the entire piece once I finish rendering. Sometimes I do it multiple times throughout the piece, which makes me end up with a completely different color scheme than the one I originally started with. But such is life. If you are super duper stuck, here are the most common ones I use. Take a screenshot, I don't mind. I heavily encourage you to try and experiment at least once though, because that's part of what makes this art style so fun. Your choice though. Rendering tips. Subway surfers on steroids. You know that thing that happens when you shine a flashlight through your skin, your blood starts showing from underneath, making it glow. This is called subway surfers on steroids, and it happens way more often than you think. Although, when you are drawing in this art style, abuse the f out of it. All you have to do is whenever you are transitioning between the highlight and the midtone color while painting the skin, use either orange or red in between or sometimes pink. You can airbrush it or just draw a solid line. It depends on your art style. If you have a cooler color scheme, you could use pink or some shades of purple instead or just ditch it all together. I don't care, but it leads me to my next point. Transition colors. Subsurface scattering squared. So pretend everything is flesh, but the blood of the flesh has different colors. No, 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 don't, don't cry. I, I'll explain. Put a transition color between literally everything of whatever is in your color scheme. For example, say you are drawing a sphere. You got your light, mids, and shadow, and now put a transition color in between those. You might have to experiment a little to figure out which color works the best depending on the spot. You could take this a step further by putting a transition between the transition, transception, and keep going and going, but at some point you will zoom out and realize that it all looks sludgy and grayish to a normal person looking at the work. So just stick to one or two transition shades. Hue variation. Especially in yeah. midtones. Whenever there is a different plane of existence, change the hue, but keep the tonal value the same. This is obviously done after you've set your shadows and highlights, but we just want to make the variation more spicy. An easier way to decide what hue to put where it's to set a million different light sources of specific colors around the entire piece. For example, in this Arlecchino painting, there is a top-down blue light 
kind of, bottom left orange and a backlight of yellow. Her hair is glowing in this part too, which is why some of the light yellow reflected on her back. Obviously you don't have to be insanely consistent with this quote unquote rule, but it gives you a nice starting point for your rendering. A good practice for this would be to draw a skull, put a base down with the shadow of anything, and then add your light sources gradually until you realize holy sh this skull is holographic. Sometimes I don't even follow this rule at all and make most of the hues random so it's really up to you. It's not doctor ratio rocket science. If you are having trouble balancing the colors from your color scheme on your art, separate your colors into two or three main ones and then use the extra as accents and apply them evenly. For painterly slash messy art styles, apply color hue jitter to your brushes. It saves you time from doing it manually. Color dodge is a thing that exists. You can use a color dodge layer when you are doing your final touches, but don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. It will start to look tacky and I will kill you in your sleep. Alternative workflow. Step one, draw whatever the hell in grayscale. Step two, get a color palette. Step three, clip a new layer onto the grayscale layer and set the blending mode to color. Step four, use any random color from your color palette and completely fill it. This will sort of be like an underpainting. Step five, use the rest of the palette and map out roughly where you want each color to go, keeping in mind the tonal value rule from the last video. And as always, you don't have to keep every single color you choose at maximum saturation. Just experiment until you find something you are happy with. Step six, add a final layer to render using the stuff I talked about earlier. This workflow is good for complex pieces, more painterly pieces, or pieces where you need to map out multiple things so that you can clearly see where your light and shadows are before you even start thinking about colors. And yeah, I still sometimes use this. I do not recommend using this for animation though because it gets really confusing when you try to export and stuff. My current most common workflow. Step one, flats. Step two, clip overlay. Step three, clip color burn linear burn. Step four, cut out where the light source hits on the color burn layer. Step five, alpha lock the overlay and color burn layers and then mess around with putting different color combos until I find something I like. Step six, render using the stuff I talked about earlier. And that's basically it. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please click lick and submarine. If you have any ideas of what else I should make a tutorial on, let me know. But I'm warning you, I am not good at uploading consistently. Also, I now stream every week on this channel, so if you'd like to see me draw live, please come and check it out. I also play Jump King occasionally.